Assalamu alaikum guys this is uh, Ali Bakir Khan with another podcast of Youth Alumni Association uh, today we've got Anam uh, Javed here with us Anam how are you doing today I'm good Ali how are you I'm good as well thank you so much for asking uh, so guys just a brief introduction regarding Anam is that Anam is currently working as a marketing operations manager and she has been working as a SEO content manager and also sales uh, executive at Lenovo uh, which is a, a you know pretty good brand and apart from that i mean she started her career as a liaison manager at root school system and she has been in couple of things like final dissertation uh, for sexualization of young girls in american advertising and she's also going to throw some light regarding gender stereotypes uh, as for as her educational journey is concerned she completed her masters of science from rifand national university in uh, media uh, sciences and from middlesex university she, she completed her ba honors in uh, public relations and media so first of all anam thank you so much for joining in that was just a brief introduction but obviously the proof is always in the pudding and we'd love to you know actually listen from you regarding your childhood journey how you started off uh, what did you want to become exactly when you were a little child you know with a water bottle and going to the school and being like okay i want to become this so can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your childhood career as well sure first of all uh, thank you so much for having me ali um i'll start off by my very uh, early education i was actually born and raised in dubai uh, and that is where i went to that is where i started school um i i've always uh, been somebody who has been very fond of storytelling and things that were more uh, to, uh, focused towards the creative side however uh, i come from uh, a very um, conventional family so just like everybody else um, most convention- conventional families in pakistan my parents also thought that uh, the ideal career for me would either be medicine or something relevant to medicine uh, but i think it was my a level grades that finally made my father understand that she she's got to do what she's got to do so um i um in between like uh, when i was in i think the 6th grade until the 9th grade i actually moved to pakistan i went to school in peshawar for a while and then i moved back to dubai and i went to a multinational school where there were children from 80 different nationalities studying there so that was sort wow. of like a culture shock like even <laughs> coming to peshawar was a culture shock and then going back to dubai was another culture shock uh, yeah. but i think that uh, really sort of uh, gave me um, a perspective on how different people can be and yet can be so similar in so many ways and um, that 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 is what uh, my schooling looked like and uh, for my bachelor's i went to middlesex as you mentioned um, i did my um, ba honors in advertising media and public relations um, i i would say that i did not um, take a single day of my degree for granted because th- that was something that i was extremely passionate about and uh, i had to sort of convince my father that i don't want to pursue medicine or anything um, that had any remotely anything to do with uh, sciences okay. so um, yeah I, i thoroughly enjoyed my bachelor's my masters and um, uh, we can also move on to talking about the dissertation <laughs> Yeah yeah of course uh so uh, first i would want to know i mean we would come towards that point of course uh why mm-hmm. not why public relations like did you see journalists or people talking and you so wanted to get into that or uh, you know girls mostly want to become doctors or they want to go for like fashion designing or a career in maybe you know something different like i, I mean usually there are norms and gender stereotypes as well like uh, i mean uh, it's everywhere not just like in pakistan like usually it's like i'm not going to name the developed countries but in pakistan like if we stick to our culture uh, people perceive that okay if uh, the girl is going to be a lecturer or a doctor that is considered as a good profession but if she is going for something like uh, being a journalist or you know into political parties uh, that is not going to be uh, you know that is considered to be something not according to the norms like that people would prefer uh, like a social taboo kind of thing so first question again why advertising in was it your father's motivation was it your interest uh, how did you end up doing all of this like you know uh, coming and and what did you do in your a level so can you throw some light upon your 
journey through sure. which we can get to know how you reached where you are today yeah um so um, uh, just like we mentioned uh, earlier I, i again i mean we do as a society expect that this is this should be something natural however i am strongly of the opinion that it is rather nurtured than something that comes naturally anybody can be creative anybody can be um anybody can have a mathematical mindset or um things of that sort um i think i've always been a creative child i've always been a people's person um communication it has been something that comes naturally to me um trying to find a middle ground with uh, whoever i communicate with i just thought that these were some of those things that were uh, were uh, some you know um uh, natural talents if i may say uh, and i i felt like a degree where uh, i would have the sort of atmosphere where i could sort of um, basically uh, uh, polish on the things that i have uh, already would would help me as a professional as well and also something that i i would uh, enjoy every day so work wouldn't feel like work um, but uh, if i'm being completely honest that wasn't uh, that wasn't like the plan when i was in school i did think that i'm going to take uh, chemistry and biology and pursue anything remotely related to medicine even if i can't like become like a proper mbbs doctor i would uh, like so um, as i said my father is a very conventional man and he always thought that these were the degrees for women to pursue and he took a lot of pride in the fact that my older sister is an environmental scientist so he thought you know do anything do pharmacy do dentistry just just anything <laughs> medicine but um i didn't do well in my a levels uh, i got i got a good grade for sociology but i did not get a good grade for chemistry and then that's when i had to sort of like have that talk with him that my heart's not in this and then he understood and yeah okay so then you joined the university how did you find what sort of culture was there and can you tell and the youth like what happens when you join public relations like what are the pros and cons of joining this sector uh what was your experience like like first day in class the uh, hitting different things regarding public relations you know you got to just make sure uh and especially when you were in middlesex university regarding advertising and public relation and media that is something more connected towards like you know the media industry uh how can a person actually you know get that chance in the media like everyone wants fame but what do you think uh like media as a whole huge industry it's not just about the actors and the actresses right so can you throw some light upon the fact that what sort of roles are there in the media industry definitely um so going back to your first question what my first day at university was like uh i would think that i was very fortunate because when you're studying with like a group of people that come from different cultures and different countries and different religions even it's just very interesting because you know when we speak of media in pakistan or even when we think of journalism in pakistan the first thing that pops up in our head is like maybe geo news or air by news or stuff like that but when you have people from egypt in your class or people from russia for that matter and then people from countries where censorship is like a a real thing it's just it's just really interesting when you're doing an assignment and everybody has their own personal insights and um their own experiences to sort of add to um and share with the class um i i think it was it was it wasn't like just the textbook learning that sort of uh opened my mind to what media could look like but it was also the interactions that we were having in class with all of these people every day um and then um the university that i went to it was very um experience oriented rather than exam uh, exam oriented we didn't really focus too much on like mcqs or exams where you would actually have to write long answers my masters was completely opposite to what i experienced in my bachelor's but um so it was all about <clears throat> gaining experience in the right field if you took up a module on um uh, uh, on journalism then you really would have to have like a story published in 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 a local uh, magazine for example uh and if you do uh pr then you would have to sort of like um ma- you know uh, do a case study managing like a fmcg uh, pr campaign or something like that so um it, it was very interesting and um 
uh, I loved the fact that it was very uh, highly focused on experience and it also sort of made us realize that media is a lot more than um, just acting. Then what just, we yeah. know, for example, yeah, exactly. That's exactly. what my question exactly was. Like what sort of roles are there? Like for example, a cameraman and talking about the whole studio, then the director, the producer, like, you know, can you tell the youth about certain you, roles? Like, e you know. Even, e even when we speak of like a producer or a director or a cameraman, I think we are still uh, focusing majorly on film. I mean, like, something as simple as uh, com communication that's also part of like media setting the tone that a company uses to communicate with their uh, customers or sort of uh, building their brand identity or the colors that they use uh, the, the color palette that they go with when they're building their identity so uh, th there is there is so much more to media than just like the typical um, broadcasting media that we uh, think of so um I think in like um, if if I can segment it for my bachelor's, I got to experience the communication side of it, then the production side of it, then the journalistic side of it, and then the PR slash advertising side of it. So it was not very detailed because there is only so much that you can do in three years. But we did sort of um, dive enough into each of these uh, segments of media to know what a career in all of these could look like. So um, this is something that was very Got it. interesting. All right. Coming towards uh, the second part of uh, the podcast, I'd like to ask you regarding final dis dissertation uh, and regarding sexualization of young girls in American advertising. So can you please throw some light upon what that was and what was the experience like uh, and what does it exactly mean, the whole concept behind that, so that our generation could also know uh, about the thoughts and the mindset regarding this whole uh, thing that you've done for just spreading uh, the awareness. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, it, this, this was a really long time ago, but I definitely do remember a few things on top of my head. Um, I did, I did a semiotic analysis for this, mm -hmm. which was basically a study of very subtle signs and advertisements where, you know, they're not, they, they, they're not screaming sexualization, but when you sort of, uh, see the connotation that each of these signs hold. And when you put them together, there is that uh, element of uh, glamorizing some, something that's not supposed to be looked at in a certain way. So we, we uh, what I did was I took a sample of different ads. Um, uh, some of the brands that I can remember right now are American Eagle, for instance. Um, and just like how they used really young models or just uh, what the or body In car ads like, as well, like normally they just portray a girl like for example uh, but doing different things like and especially f to the parents I want to just give this message as well yeah go ahead please but, uh, but I mean definitely uh, I think that's the thing for uh, all, all of the industry across, um, across the world but it's just the older women because uh it sort of impacts the young minds. And then there is that, I mean, there is so much associated to it, just like uh, body image issues. And then um, just so, so many uh, health related psychological problems that sort of uh, arise from these ads that, that use very young uh, models as muses and uh, portray them in a, in a sexualized or in a very glamorized manner. So that, that is what the dissertation was all about. Okay. And did you actually get something out of it as well or just studied and, you know, did you spread the awareness like in the US sector, like because it's happening, but is there anyone to stop it? Like even in Pakistan, slowly and gradually, I'm not going to say that like exactly it's the same way, but mostly mm -hmm. now there is a culture that, you know, we guys can see all over across Instagram that people are just coming up with different pictures and focused on their beauty. And I mean, it's not bad to be very honest, like it's good, but you know, getting too much involved into it and just uh, making yourself as an icon and doing whatever it takes to just, you know, portray yourself out there. What are your thoughts about that? And especially the gender stereotypes that you would, um, you know, want to speak about as well. Mm, okay, sure. Um, I don't, if I'm being completely honest, I don't know if um, it was a research paper. So I don't think it had the sort of impact where I would say that it, change the world or something but i got it i'm a strong believer in 
in talking about things because that's when you start to acknowledge that certain things spread are awareness basic if i think yeah. exactly so you you have to at least start identifying problems as problems even if you can't change them it's it's i think the first step is to sort of um, acknowledge that this is not acceptable or this is bizarre and this is not something that is normal yeah a person uh, should not be treated inside. just in a way that you know you should specifically just portray them <clears throat> just for this particular thing right i mean i understand there are lots of other ways ex- as well to just like you know provide them with money but treating people like an object be it a man or a woman uh i Definitely. think we should not stereotype so let's come towards gender stereotype because you wanted to mention something about that so what do you want to say about that particularly um so um my my bachelor's degree i focused on american advertising because of the kind of university that, that i went to but for, when i moved to pakistan for my masters i wanted to focus on the pakistani media industry and i thought it would be a good idea to sort of uh, build on my previous dissertation experience and i did like mm-hmm. uh, an analysis of pakistani television ads uh, for my masters and what i did okay. here was that i took a sample and i sort of uh, again did a qualitative analysis as well as a quantitative where um, we Uh, like where i try to do a comparison of the sort of roles that women took up in pakistani ads versus the sort of uh, roles men took up and again um, this is not an opinion this wasn't an opinion based uh, piece i can i can't uh, call it right or wrong but it's just that um, the the idea was to identify that we are portraying each gender in a certain way and uh, we are building like a, a a construct basically a construct for each of these so um that is that is what the master's dissertation mainly focused on okay and that also uh, you know you wanted to throw some light upon gender stereotypes right i mean my question specifically was regarding the gender stereotype like what do you think how is that happening and what are the uh, steps that we guys can take to you know remove and eliminate that uh, um if uh, so you know uh, the other day i read uh, a post on instagram that said that uh, the <laughs> that millennial women have a lot on their plate right now because uh, we probably especially in a place like pakistan were uh, one of the very first generations that were uh, introduced to the idea of equality in the sense that going to university was not an option it was something that we were expected to do and having mm-hmm. a career was also something that was very encouraged but we grew up seeing very traditional uh, roles um, in 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 our uh, domestic settings so right now uh, we are sort of like trying to accelerate professionally but then there is also this social expectation of uh, what a woman should be doing um within like a domestic situation so that that sort of is something that's very close to my heart and i always sort of challenge the stereotype that we've built and again it's not like a it's not like a fight between the genders but just just an just a conversation to sort of um encourage equal opportunity for everyone and um equal division, uh, division of labor should so, be for men so as well no, to be very honest definitely. yeah definitely yeah one one Definitely. thing that i would like to add on here anam is that see i mean when you talk about extremes we have seen people coming on things like orat march and you know all those things happening women going bizarre all of a sudden like you know by coming up like exclusively for their rights which is totally okay and i mean being very honest like i support feminism uh, because uh, obviously everyone has a mother a sister and we guys grew up in certain situations where we need to respect uh you know a women uh, because uh, uh, if behind every successful man there is no doubt that there is a, a a strong hold of a woman because she's the one who runs the family when you are a child your mother is the one who you know is there to take care of you uh, then when when you grow up you've got sisters you've got cousins you've got teachers uh, you've got friends and colleagues right and the whoever is a girl and a woman Uh, then you've got a wife so everyone is there to just help you out so from a, a, being a man i would totally agree and understand that you guys need to give equal rights and let them live a free life instead of just putting something on them that is fine i agree but what do you think about extremism like such extremists who are trying to play that women card and just trying to take advantage of that do you actually really think that is even happening or not 
Um, uh, Ali, the thing is that I think when we talk about equality, it's not really in terms of uh, equality that, okay, so you changed the tire, so now I have to do it too. And because I made dinner, now you have to make lunch. I don't think equality works like that. It's just the, 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 uh, the option of having the choice. And it's not just for women. Like as a woman, if I choose to be a homemaker, that's a, that's a completely respectable choice. But if I choose to be somebody that does not want to pursue traditional, like a traditional role in the house, that's fine. And similarly for a man, maybe he enjoys doing something like cooking, but then like it's, Absolutely. it's like socially. I mean, if a man is us, crying, so. I, I, I mean, I in my exactly. life know that even if I have one tear drop, my family, everyone is going to be like, Yaar ladke ho, kya ho gaya? you know, exactly. I mean, it's just like a stereotype. Uh, bro, I exactly. mean, you're not supposed to cry because I mean, we have feelings. We are men. Like, try to understand. We go exactly. there. We work as well. Not like totally, you know. I mean, uh, there is nothing as such. Like, emotions are equal. That's it. What a woman is feeling, a man can feel that as well. So we need to treat Agreed. all the genders equally. Talking about women, like there is a Mother's Day, then there is a uh, there is a Father's Day as well. That is one message that I would like to give to the parents as well. instead of letting your daughter you know go around and just seeking other ways of exploring her opportunities in life it's better to talk to her you know and just have that mindset of making sure that whatever she does in life she is actually telling you about it and then you know career counseling is also one part of our right for example if she wants to go for fashion designing i understand that living in a pakistan society a pakistani society we have certain norms i'm not saying don't follow those norms but at least talk you know and convince try to convince the people from the bottom of their heart then if the in the and end they agree yeah go ahead yeah sorry sorry i i'm so sorry to cut you off and similarly with your sons like have conversations with your children so yeah. that it's easier for them to open up to everything that they're experiencing where they don't go out and act out socially in in different ways it i think it's so important to have a uh, mature conversations with your children whether daughters or sons yeah for them to know that there is a safe space where i can like uh, come forward and i'm you the first and... feminist that i'm speaking to who's actually concerned about rights of men and uh, thank you so much i mean that's that's what the message should be in this podcast i think one of the best things that i've ever heard is me talking about feminism and you talking about male uh, you know men rights as well like if one person does something wrong for example a man or a women it does not mean that the whole world is the same right you need to give people chances you need to uh, you know there should be rules and especially for the government i i think there should be rules to just make sure that there is strict strict punishment on uh, whatever mistakes people make it's not a mistake it's a delib- if it's a deliberate act there needs to be a certain situation for sure i mean people cannot just go away with it definitely um uh, and when we talk about uh, i mean this 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 is something that is very close to my heart i do believe that we've been a very heavily patriarchal we label as extremism i i don't i'm not called rebellious response that has that comes after like years and years of suppression and i think that it is so important to uh, focus on raising better sons better men so, because that is what that is actually what Absolutely. is going to uh, m- make things better and uh, you know when you're uh, when you're the loudest person in the room talking about uh, women rights and like gender stereotypes i feel like there is so much responsibility on my shoulders right now because i'm a mother of two sons as well so i i really hope that all the change that i uh, want to bring into the society can be uh, can can uh, can be something that i uh, can translate into my parenting as well so yeah absolutely anam this is this is so nice coming towards the last part uh I just want you to give certain tips to the, the to the youth based on your experience because there is a gap that we guys need to fill and that is a mission that I'm working on and as you use the word close to my heart this is something that's very very close to my heart I want to make sure that we are providing people equal opportunities and then you know coming up with career counseling so that we can build more and more entrepreneurs that is why you know coming back from the office you are giving your time i'm also come here to actually go ahead and contribute like this 30 minutes just to make sure that we are helping people out what are those ways to which you think in your 
career, whatever you've studied in media, talking about gender stereotypes or whatever you've done, we've been speaking a lot. Everyone can speak on these things. And I totally agree with what you've said. You can agree with what I've said. And we can even disagree in certain areas, which is a human nature. Nobody uh, is supposed to agree with one another. But point is, as long as you are staying calm and composed and you, you know, you're accepting what the other person is saying, regardless of the fact that you do not agree with it. But you still need to listen to it and try to acknowledge. That is one thing, guys. Like that is really important. If someone is not agreeing, uh, uh, if you are not agreeing to someone, it does not mean that you're supposed to just like you know be rude to them or just be like, okay, I am not because I have been working with a lot of different Christians, Indians, uh, uh, like Hindus, Muslims, you know. But one thing that I believe that is heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and for the entire human race. So coming towards the end, Anam, uh, any entrepreneurial mindset advice that you would want to give so that we can build more and more entrepreneurs in this society? Um, I think, um, I, I mean, there were two things that I wanted to talk about when we um, sort of uh, talk about creating opportunity. The first one was that I experienced a career gap myself and I was, um, in the phase of having my kids and just solely looking after them. And uh, there was no COVID. So work from home was not something that was uh, widely uh, accepted. I feel like there is so much potential um, hidden away within the four walls of a house. All of these uh, mothers with like master's degrees and bachelor's degrees and talents and passions and hobbies that don't really know how to sort of channel uh, their uh, efforts and how to uh, add structure to what they want to do. Uh, I think it's very important to realize that uh, I, I don't know how to put it as simply as koi kaam chota nahi hota. nothing, no effort, nothing is too small. Um, there is a lot of stigma in our uh, society around uh, doing things that don't fit the typical definition of a white collar job. I feel like if you're passionate about something and if you really have the uh, um, the, the mindset to do something, it's very important to uh, research around it, come up with a plan of action, uh, organize the activities that you need to do in order to achieve very small goals and just make an effort, do something, do something very little, uh, read that article, um, write um, a, a small plan of action, learn a new skill, learn three new um, uh, formulas of Excel with YouTube, just start somewhere and have like very small goals and then reflect back to what you were a week ago, a month ago, six months ago, a year ago. I think it's very important to have that mindset of growth and not to deem any task or any job or any role as uh, not good enough or too small. I think that's something very, very important. And especially given the current uh, situation in Pakistan and the economic situation that we are going through, I think it's very important for us to have that mindset of growth and uh, create opportunities for ourselves and for those around us. So that that is definitely something that I would encourage the youth to do. Perfect, perfect. That sounds good. And now coming towards the innovative approach of having a different mindset. For example, if you uh, are given a role of leadership, okay, like in mm -hmm. any society, and uh, you are supposed to actually eliminate this concept of, uh, you know, having those stereotypes for different genders. Like, for example, which kind of is changing as well. Like, uh, to be very honest, I mean, I find a lot of different uh, young men, like even talking about myself, like, you know, I have given... I mean, it's not even I have given that privilege or I have given that, but I mean, it's always good to discuss things and then just like, you know, give people autonomy. And that's what I have mm -hmm. seen because my mother, she was a teacher uh, and we have seen that coming, you know, in these, these generations as well. But talking about all those areas where there still is, you know, something like, for example, uh, don't go for fashion designing, even though, you know, there is no harm in that. For example, talking about Hazrat Khadija when she... Uh, uh, you know, wanted to know more about Hazur Pak Sallam, that's Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. So she inquired about it, that who's that person mm -hmm. who's such innocent and she used to also get involved into the trading part. That means a woman mm -hmm. can do whatever she wants. Obviously, there are limits and, you know, you gotta just uh, uh, mm -hmm. al also you have to see what, whether what sort of trends are changing and you have to cope up with those trends. 
uh, regardless of the fact i mean i cannot say that at that time things were pretty good for women uh, either uh, i don't know i mean to be very honest but point be, being is that in islam there is nothing like that that you cannot go ahead and uh, you know uh, seek your interest or inquire more about it so how to eliminate this problem if you are a young leader and you are given this chance of coming up with three steps that okay this is what anam javed is going to do just to make sure that we minimize and spread awareness of providing a uh, women equal opportunities i think uh, the first um, the first and foremost thing is to actually allow uh, facilitate that opportunity for people you don't know how good someone might be at something unless and until you give them a chance to try it out that's one and uh, secondly i think it's very important to not um, look down upon things uh because um i'm and again it's not something very measurable but just like you said that if somebody wants to pursue fashion designing and keeping religion completely aside that's that's a whole new uh, debate um whether it's becoming a homemaker or uh becoming like a corporate accountant or whatever it's just that not i not labeling things as not appropriate for a certain person or a certain gender even if it is a man that wants to be uh, a chef or whatever it's just that acceptance and tolerance i think are some of those things that are very very important to bring that change uh, in our society when we start um, when we when when we are open to uh, unlearning certain things that we've known to be true all our lives i think that's one of and uh, my question yeah. is in regards to the parents i mean i understand like girls and women they want to go ahead and go ahead to you know pursue these things but how would you eliminate or how would you change the mindset of the parents because i personally have been visiting different schools and to be very honest parents do not even have time to listen to such things and they say that it it's it is a, a traditional part of their family to just make certain decisions based on what their elders think you know so talking about those areas in which girls are facing facing such issues i mean it's um, it is a big big challenge of course i mean it's not that easy so uh ali i think we have a really long way to go i have these conversations with some so a lot of my family as well uh like extended family um people that are not currently uh, living in cities for 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 that matter and when i have these conversations with them they're like you you live in islamabad but we live in this setting in this village or in this town and we have to follow through certain um, you know follow certain norms to 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 have a peaceful life and not have people talk about us or whatever but i think uh, you have to especially when your children are in that uh, era where you're parenting them they're not adults i think you have to have the same set of rules at home you have to have same set of rules at home for your daughter to feel like she's she's um, no, that is she, something you think same. i'm 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 talking about changing perceptions of people like what are the steps that you can take like the reason i'm asking you this is so that people who are listening they start doing it at a smaller level charity begins at home right so for example if Definitely. someone elder is listening he or she might be yeah. able to try you know doing like for those example things. if you yeah. have if you have a curfew of uh, 6 pm for your daughter then the curfew for your son should also be 6 pm and if she's the one <laughs> feeding up after dinner then it it has to be and painting. what if both and the again, son and daughter like they are facing the same issue do you think that is going to be uh, i mean that would be even worse right i mean don't you think about that no i i i actually don't think so i think if we think it's not safe for our uh, 13 year old safe safety is a different out, thing safety is a different thing yeah i agree it's a that. different thing and also i mean uh, see the reason why my daughter is not allowed to be outside after 6 pm is because somebody's son is allowed to be outside after 6 6 pm oh, right oh, the man. idea is <laughs> the idea is I that mean, that is that is huge you, <laughs> yeah you you have to you have to uh, you have to uh, make your sons aware of the responsibility that they have in in like sort of bringing that yeah uh, just try um, to teach them those manners at least you know try to respect people and you also have uh, people in your house and you, you know and mothers i think they really have a very important role to play uh, uh, in educating and i think there should be a subject of respecting women or you know uh just making sure that you're treating and and of expressing your feelings there is no harm at a certain age when you're 18 above or 19 20 you know you're done with your studies and you want to actually go ahead and ask out someone you know there are ways 
to just go ahead and propose a person that i mean you can do that as i gave an example of hazrat khadija as well but point is that involve your parents involve someone like your brother involve your mother involve your father whoever you are comfortable with and for the parents i'd like to give one message that you know try to be a little lenient uh, uh, these days uh, society has a lot already that we guys are coping up with especially the kids of this era they do not have uh, that autonomy of going to the cricket stadiums like the the way we used to i mean it's really a lot of security is going on a lot of mess I mean, I still remember. I used to wave, uh, you know, the cricket players out, outside the streets. I mean, it was like really common to just meet them. And now, you know, they 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 don't have that entertainment anymore. So, you know, just try to uh, uh, just. I mean, don't be too harsh, and also have the rules, as you just said. That if you think that going after six pm is not safe, then just make sure it's happening. And tell the and, reason. And, and and it's happening for both the genders. Again, it was just an example. The idea is. to to make both your daughter and your son aware of the sort of responsibility that they have it i mean just the idea of respect and honor should not so be associated to um one gender that's that's just how i view it and i think if if we taught our uh, sons to sort of respect women that are not their mothers and their sisters and that do not fit their um their uh, perfect description of like a good women that's fine i mean everybody is worthy of respect people can make different choices and you can disagree with them but you can't like sort of think it's okay to act uh, a certain way or um, cross certain boundaries with a person just because you per- perceive them um, in a certain I mean, that is so not just, i mean religiously it's not good i mean and obviously in the norms morally uh, it's definitely morally uh, it's it's not, not good and i think yeah i mean there is there are sayings that say that you lower your gaze while you're walking just to make sure that you know you're not harming anyone through your whatever actions you do just make sure that you speak the right words you respect uh, you know uh, people and for women also there are different things like obviously we need to follow those anam thank you so very much for giving your valuable time i know it has been like it because the the topic was quite uh, informative i guess and we needed mm-hmm. like i i think this is a channel where i do these kind of discussions just to make sure we are breaking stereotypes and we are listening to you know such things that are really important because the world is going at a rapid pace and we uh, especially elders because this is going to be for people 18 plus obviously they're going to view the content just like whoever is listening uh, try to be a good human being first and then try to respect your elders and try to uh, get something out of the podcast you know in terms of positivity for example if you want to apply for anything like international relations or any 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 subject you particularly particularly think talk to your parents about it subscribe to our channel youth alumni association you want to reach out anam anam is there on linkedin she can answer your questions obviously if they're uh, going to be the right ones and uh, anam anything else that you want to add on in the last minute that we guys have um i think that would be all um ali uh, i i think we sort of deviated from our topic and i hope that's fine but i do think that this is a very uh, important um uh, subject but this is very to close to our hearts to be very honest i mean whatever you've done definitely very done, close to our yeah. hearts and definitely something that uh, the parents and the children should be focusing on because um th- this is the very foundation of our society as well so yeah but it was it was interesting yeah you know knowing your career journey and your father has supported you throughout and i i really appreciate such uh, uh, you know uh, women and such girls coming up and you know talking about these kind of things which really makes me feel a proud citizen in which we respect people and we know our boundaries and we can talk about certain situations which the other countries are doing and within our limits and you know staying with our within our boundaries so thank you so much anam it, it was nice having you in the session take care of yourself okay thank you ali thank you so much for having me appreciate it allah fez allah fez